Okay, this is the assembly video, so you will use this video when you assemble the telescope for the first time. The way I have the scope spread out in this room is the way you'll get it after you remove it from the crate and all the packaging materials. The mirror box, rocker box assembly will be together. The axes, both altitude and azimuth, will be engaged. There will be various pieces of cardboard and wrapping that you have to remove from the ground board. Over here, the upper tube assembly will come fully assembled. Um, it was pre-collimated uh, when you get it, so it should be fairly close to collimation. We have the truss spreader, the four trusses. The primary mirror will be in the crate supplied by the optician. Over here on this table will be the various things, depending on what options that you receive, that will also be packed in the crate. Um, you have your light shroud, tail rads, any wiring that comes with the scope. These are the pins for the wheels and handles. Your altitude encoder will come pre-assembled. The Argo Navis podium will come pre-wired, pre-assembled. You'll have the wheels and handles. Uh, they will not be assembled. You'll have to put the wheels onto the shafts. When you get them, you'll just have these lock nuts on them like that. It acts as a set screw to lock this to the shaft. So you'll loosen the Allen key, take the nut off. Note the washer that's there. The wheels have an offset, so we'll put the offset side down like this. Put the nut on, just bring it up so the wheel's spinning freely, and then tighten the nut. The only tools that you will need during the assembly of the entire telescope will be just a set of Allen keys. Uh, this is the uh, winch system, and the handles are back there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack the primary mirror. There will be screws in the lid, which I've already removed. Okay, so I got all the packing out. For the time being, we're going to leave the cardboard cover on the primer. Okay, I happen to have this handy little crane to put in and take out big mirrors, but the thing I want to show you here is, is that this, where these arms are, would represent the areas where you want to grab the primary mirror. So, looking at it from here, just to get an idea of the approximate locations of your hands. So to begin with, we're going to remove the top cover. This will be marked indicating which side is top. This exposes the mirror cell. The next thing I want to do, this opening here is only a half inch larger than the optic, so there would be very little room for your hands. So we designed it so this top plate comes out to give you ample room to install the mirror. This is held in by these four thumb screws on the top of the octagon. Remove those. And then, nice and easy, you take out the top plate. Alright, before we install the primary mirror, we want to inspect the mirror cell. These uh, hold down clips, we want to rotate them so they are out of the way of the primary mirror. Uh, when you get the scope, there will be a styrofoam piece in here that is the size of the mirror, which will hold your edge mounts at their proper radius. If you see these askew like this, you definitely want to kind of get them straightened out so the mirror goes in. So when we're going in with the mirror, these won't hang up on the mirror. So you want to take all precautions when you're putting the primary mirror in to make sure it just goes in smoothly. Now, where I showed the arms on the uh, on my little lifting thing, basically you want your hands right here, just above the lower edge mount and just below the upper clip, just like that when you put the mirror in. This way there's nothing in the way. So I got my mirror and the crane hanging over. Of course, the crane represents you and a buddy. Okay, with the primary in, I want to go ahead and push it down to make sure that it's seated in the lower edge mount. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the clips over the mirror 
I want to point out that you can see how far these clips come over. They should always be over all the way during transport, but when you're viewing, if you want to see a little less clip, you can just turn the clip like that, so it's just covering a small part of the mirror. So with the mirror in properly, I'm going to go ahead and put the octagon top plate back in. I'm just carefully put it in here so it drops down. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our four thumb screws. It's always a good idea to put these in loosely first, make sure everything's lined up. With the top mirror plate secure, you can come in and put in the top cover. You never want to do any assembly with the mirror exposed. The next step is to install the altitude encoder and arm. You'll see the bottom has a slotted end. This slots over the bolt in the rocker. Do not tighten this. This is meant to slide like this. Put it in the bolt right here and tighten up the set screw. When you put this on, make sure your wires are over the face so they don't get trapped underneath it. And then the wires will just go like this and we'll show that later on. The next step is we're going to install the side trusses first. What you want to look for is you want to look for the trusses that have these pins on the back. These are the side, there will be two sets. And then you want to find the one that has the word Argo stamped in the top plate. Not sure if you can see that. Now take note that when the trusses go on, these top plates will be pointing to the outside of the telescope. So the first truss that I want to install is the one that's marked Argo, plate to the outside. Okay, I'm going to slide it down onto this side of the scope. You can see the bottom of the truss has slotted ends. So they're going to slot right on to the thumb bolts. I also want to point out that we have a cutout here in the altitude bearing. When you put this truss in, try to have it lean slightly forward. So it gives you more clearance here. And once you get it in the slots, then stand it up straight and tighten your thumb bolts. On the lower truss mounts, in the plates on the trusses, there'll be recesses that the thumb bolts recess into. So it's not necessary to over tighten them. Just bring them up, get them snug, and that's it. Okay, the next truss is going to be the other side. Again. Line up the slots. I'm leaning it forward slightly to clear my cutout here, bringing it straight up, and then I'm going to tighten my two thumb bolts. So, as you can see, we now have our pins on the inside of the trusses. These are for the truss spreader to lock into. You'll also notice here. I have 10 inches of protective material here to stop the truss from getting scratched up when you install the truss spreader. So just make sure you stay in this area when you put it in. The truss spreader will have the word Argo marked on one side. This will obviously go to the Argo side of the scope. Hold it up like this. You can approach it from the front or the back of the telescope. The back is easier. Bring it on. You'll see the holes bottom of the truss spreader will line up with those pins. Make sure it's lined up on both sides. And then you just put it down until it locks in place. So now that we have the side trusses and the truss spreader in place, the next step is to put the front and back truss on. I want to point out that this Velcro is really strong stuff. So when you finish using it, when we take the trusses off, you want to Take the truss off and roll it up like this. Don't let it get all messed up or it'll be a pain in the butt to undo because it's industrial grade Velcro. So right now we have it like this. I'm going to put the truss on while the Velcro is still wrapped and unwrap it from the spreader after the truss is up. Now this is the truss that has the wiring to complete the connection into the mirror box and up to the upper tube assembly depending on what options you have. This is the next truss we want to put on, which will always go towards the back of the telescope. The back of the telescope will be to your left when you're standing to the encoder side of the uh, mirror box. 
goes on like all the other trusses. Slide it into the slots. Tighten your thumb bolts. Okay, now you can see up here the Velcro. I'm going to undo it. Okay, and then I'm going to pull the Velcro around the truss very tight like this. There is a, there's a little protective layer here on the truss spreader to prevent from scratching. We make every effort to make any contact points uh, go on the scope without scratching. So I will follow through with this one. Bringing it around, tightening it down. Then the last truss obviously goes to the front of the telescope. Same procedure. Put it down. Lock it out. And then get your Velcro wrapped around the truss nice and tight. So what this does is to keep the top opening at the proper placement and slightly wider than what the front end is. So this way the front end will slip in and out very easy. The other thing that it does is once we tighten up all the four thumb bolts on the upper tube assembly, it actually bows the trusses just slightly, taking out most of the reoccurring vibration in the truss tubes. The next step is to install the wheels and handles and winch system which will pull this assembly down so we can install the upper tube assembly without the aid of a ladder. So next we're going to install the wheels and handles and the winch system. A couple things to point out here. The wheels and handles have these nylon screws threaded into the tubing. These are stops so they go in the telescope the right amount to line up the holes with the pins. Uh, this assumes you have all the wheels already tightened down onto the axles. So I'm going to start with this one. This will slide in to the stop and not slam it into the stop. This will line it up with the hole and push the pin all the way through. Now on the handles, one side goes into the telescope, the other side the winch goes on. So when you look at it, see the nylon stops where the side holes are, that's the side that goes into the telescope. Where the top holes are, that's the side that the winch will eventually go on. Okay, the next step, I'm going to put the handle in. It's a good idea to hold it so it's balanced. Get in, take the weight off the back, and slide it in until it hits the stop. And then put the pin in all the way through. Grab the other one, same thing. very important that these pins are in place. Never attempt to move the scope or use the winch without the pins in place. 